but you're a bunch of boys making models out of balsa wood. You don't have anything under control. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 historically accurate movies. We're starting the war from right here. Head inland, we're going inland. For this list, we'll be looking at the best films that were praised for their historical authenticity. What do you think of the real stories behind these movies? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Lawrence of Arabia. One of David Lean's many masterpieces, Lawrence of Arabia details the experiences of T.E. Lawrence in the First World War. He was the most extraordinary man I ever knew. Did you know him well? I knew him. The movie is based on Lawrence's own book, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, which was published in 1926. The film has its flaws in regards to history using dramatic license to depict an epic cinematic adventure. Most of the criticism is aimed at the portrayal of Lawrence himself, but many biographers have argued against this criticism. The defenders claim that while imperfect, the movie contains a reasonably accurate depiction of the historic figure and his actions. Biographer Stephen E. Tabachnik even praises the film as a whole, calling it appropriate and true to the text of Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Could you give me a few words about Colonel Lawrence? What, more words? The revolt in the desert played a decisive part in the Middle Eastern campaign. Number 19, Milk. On January 8, 1978, the openly gay Harvey Milk made California history when he was inducted as a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. You're pretty cute, but I don't date guys over 40. Well then, this is my lucky night. Why is that? I'm still 79. His film is quite accurate, with its story tracing back to the 1982 biography The Mayor of Castro Street, which was written by San Francisco Chronicle reporter Randy Schiltz. This book inspired the Oscar-winning documentary The Times of Harvey Milk. These sources provide a great framework for the film, which accurately captured the life of Milk and the politics of the day. Even the chilling words of Milk predicting his own assassination were lifted directly from the documentary. Friday, November 18th. This is only to be played in the event of my death by assassination. The Guardian called Milk the creme de la creme of faithful biopics, and it's not hard to see why. Number 18, Spotlight. Winning Best Picture at the 88th Academy Awards, Spotlight follows a small news team as they reveal uncomfortable truths within the Catholic Church. Keep our eye on the Herald. They yeah. run this and they get it wrong. The church will bury it. We, we got to do this now. The film is an accurate retelling of the real Spotlight team and its efforts in winning this 2003 Pulitzer Prize for public service. Included are the award-winning reporters and the Boston Globe's editor-at-large, Walter V. Robinson. Some events were made up or exaggerated for dramatic purposes, but the film remains a fairly realistic portrayal of history. Even the Catholic Church praised the film's authenticity. The Catholic News Service called it generally accurate, and Vatican Radio referred to it as honest. Sometimes truth is more disturbing than fiction. It's a big school, Robbie. You know that. And, and we're talking about seven alleged victims over, what, eight years? Number 17, Gallipoli. Starring Mel Gibson as Frank Dunn, Gallipoli is another film centered around the Ottoman Empire in the First World War. No thanks, if you blokes all want to go and get yourself shot, go ahead. Well, I'm not scared to die for my country, Frank. Well, good for you, Snow. You go and sign yourself on. Per its name, this film primarily covers the Gallipoli campaign, which occurred in modern-day Turkey and resulted in Ottoman victory. When it comes to war, Gallipoli is none too accurate, especially in its shoddy depiction of the climactic Battle of the Neck. Most of the film's accuracy lies in its representation of lifestyles. For example, Gallipoli accurately conveys the horrific conditions that soldiers faced throughout the Gallipoli campaign. Furthermore, it serves as a fantastic period piece about Australian life in the early 20th century. When it comes to visuals and atmosphere, Gallipoli is a triumph of accuracy. I'd be ashamed of myself if I didn't find it. Well, that only proves one thing, that you and I are different. Let's drop it, eh? Number 16, The Imitation Game. A highly successful movie, The Imitation Game chronicles the life of Alan Turing and his time decoding secret German messages in World War II. You have an opportunity here to make some actual use of your life. And end up like you, no thanks. This fascinating story is based on the biography Alan Turing the Enigma, written by esteemed mathematician Andrew Hodges. Unfortunately, the real story is so complex that a movie adaptation would never do it justice. But The Imitation Game does a solid job of conveying the basics. Some of the more dramatic and unsettling aspects of the story are lifted straight from history. These include Turing being put on trial for gross indecency and his subsequent chemical castration. The film even earned praise from Turing's descendants, many of whom complimented the performance of Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, well, the judge gave me um, a choice, uh, either two years in prison or, 
hormonal therapy. Oh my God. Number 15, first man. Neil Armstrong is one of the most important figures in human history, having been the first person to step foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. A biography titled First Man, The Life of Neil A. Armstrong was published in 2005, and it's from this book that Damien Chazelle sourced the story. First Man isn't so much about the Apollo mission, but the life of Armstrong himself. A few factual liberties were made, like Armstrong bringing his deceased daughter's bracelet to the moon. But First Man is nonetheless very accurate, faithfully depicting Armstrong's reserved personality and journey to the moon. Chazelle even included the orchestral Lunar Rhapsody in the dance scene, as this was the actual piece of music that Armstrong and his wife danced to. Do you remember this? Yeah. I'm surprised that you remember it. Number 14, Gettysburg. There's a lot of material to mine from the Battle of Gettysburg, which occurred from July 1st to 3rd in 1863. But Ronald F. Maxwell's epic got the job done. We hold this rate for a couple hours, we can keep them away. We can block that road to the main body gets here. We can deprive the enemy of the high ground. The length certainly helps. Gettysburg was actually shot as a miniseries, which explains the imposing four plus hours running time. Many historians have praised the movie's faithful and respectful approach to the battle. All the major players are present, and the film was meticulous in nailing down historical aspects like battle strategies, costumes, props, and character motivations. The National Park Service even provided the filmmakers with the rare opportunity to film on the real Gettysburg battlefield, which lent a great deal of authenticity to the setting. Reynolds, my old friend, Ulysses Sam Grant, there was some good men in that army. Yes, sir, there were indeed. Some of those men are waiting for us now, up ahead on those ridges. Number 13, The Longest Day. Military historian Cornelius Ryan wrote The Longest Day, a very popular book about the D-Day invasion of 1944. There it is, man. Omaha Beach, dead ahead. It was published in 1959 and turned into a movie just three years later. Nearly three hours in length, the film serves as an epic examination of the Normandy landings. Many cast members actually served in World War II and their military experience is central in the film's accuracy. Richard Todd, who plays Major John Howard, actually took part in D-Day and even helped to recreate his own personal experience for the movie. The film was also shot at many real locations, including Pont de Hook, and D-Day veterans worked as historical consultants. It all ensured a war epic that brims with genuine and frightening history. Oh, the evil of it all! Trying to turn a man before he's even had a chance to fight! Ah, come on! Number 12, City of God. Brazilian author Paulo Lins was raised in the Rio suburb of Cidade de Deus, or City of God. Esse cara aí é o cabeleira. Para eu contar a história da cidade de Deus, eu preciso começar por ele. Known as a violent and impoverished favela, City of God became the subject of Lins' semi-autobiographical novel of the same name. With the story spanning multiple decades, City of God offers unknowing viewers a horrific and tragic glimpse into the favela's geography, economy, and culture of organized crime. The film is even composed of amateur actors, many of whom came from the real city of God. They underwent an acting workshop that taught them how to simulate the area's crime. The movie was shot in a real favela, with producers coming into conflict with local slumlords. The resulting atmosphere is authentically gritty and uncomfortable. Todo dia alguém apanhava, alguém ia preso, alguém estava mal. Mas ninguém nunca via nada, ninguém sabia de nada. Number 11, A Bridge Too Far. Cornelius Ryan strikes again. Based on his 1974 book of the same name, A Bridge Too Far recounts the story of Operation Market Garden. That gentleman is the prize, the bridge over the Rhine, the last bridge between us and Germany. This was one of the largest airborne operations of World War II. Its aim was to secure various bridges in the Netherlands, thereby granting Allied access into Germany. The period was faithfully recreated by using real military hardware in authentic Dutch locations. The complex battle logistics were also fairly accurate. This is because Roy Urquhart and Brian Horrocks, respectively played by Sean Connery and Edward Fox in the film, served as military advisors. With a solid foundation in Ryan's book and first-hand accounts of the operation, A Bridge Too Far is a great exercise in historical authenticity. How are you? I'm not sure that I'll know for a while. But I'm sorry about the way it worked out. Number 10, Come and See. A subversive response to a long history of Soviet war propaganda films, Come and See was written by director Elam Klimov with the help of an ex-partisan who fought against the Nazis, along with numerous eyewitness accounts. The production of the subjective and the realistic portrayal of the German occupation of Belarusia was almost as brutal as the subject matter. 
Alexei Kravkin playing the lead role was a non-professional actor who endured fatigue and hunger during filming, all the while dodging live ammunition used instead of blanks for the filming. Meanwhile, wartime documentary-style footage made the film a stunning testament to the suffering endured by ordinary people fighting for their lives on the Russian front. Number 9. Flags of Our Fathers And if we wish to truly honor these men, we should remember them the way they really were, the way my dad remembered them. In 1945, Joe Rosenthal's iconic photograph of U.S. Marines raising the stars and stripes on the captured island of Iwo Jima brought fame to its subjects. Clint Eastwood's epic war film was based on a best-selling book written by the son of one of the men in the photo, James Bradley, who also provided narration and interviews with veterans for the movie. I'm sorry. Sorry. You were the best father a man could have. Flags of Our Fathers' depiction of the horrors of warfare and the tragedy of what comes after was praised by the U.S. Marine Corps chief historian for its attention to detail and historical verisimilitude, particularly the depiction of the harsh terrain where the Marines fought. No! Oh, Number 8. Lincoln Historians and critics gave a warm reception to this painstaking recreation of President Lincoln's fight to have the 13th Amendment passed in the closing months of the American Civil War. It's not Wilmington Port. It's not a military campaign. It's the amendment to abolish slavery. Why else would you force me to invite demented radicals into my home? The film was shot in Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Petersburg in Virginia, where historical architecture from the period remains today. Daniel Day-Lewis received widespread accolades for his masterful performance as President Lincoln, paying attention to key character details like the president's unexpectedly high voice and propensity as a master storyteller. They said she murdered her husband. He was 83. He was choking her, and uh, she grabbed a hold of a stick of firewood and fractured his skull, and he died. Tommy Lee Jones was also praised for his performance as Thaddeus Stevens, a 19th century master of insults and sarcastic wit. Slavery is the only insult to natural law, you fatuous nincompoop. Number 7. Das Boot This claustrophobic depiction of wartime life aboard a German U-boat submarine was based on a novel by Lothar Gunther Buchheim, who served as a naval war correspondent on the U-96 during World War II's Battle of the Atlantic. Victor! Victor! With the commander of the U-96 as technical advisor, an obsessively accurate replica of the vessel interior was built, which could be hydraulically rocked, shaken, and tilted up to 45 degrees. Realism was also enhanced by location shooting at the wartime boat pen at La Rochelle. Das Boot is a stunning depiction of the confinement, tedium, and terror of ordinary men caught in the war beneath the waves. <laughs> Number 6. Tora 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 This documentary-like account of the attack on Pearl Harbor showed both sides of the battle, emphasizing the historical context and detailed planning of the attack. I'd make a bet they're going to attack us. Japan is going to attack us. The 29th is only four days off. Producers and directors from Japan and the United States filmed their perspectives separately which were then combined into a single film. Technical advisors from both sides were spared no expense to make the sets and scenes as true to life as possible. Full-scale replicas of naval vessels were built, and American training planes were made to resemble wartime Japanese planes, which added to the realism of what was being shown on screen. One wheel stuck, sir. But jolt it loose, we're going in. Number five, 12 Years a Slave. Based on the 1853 biography of freed ex-slave Solomon Northup, this film was praised by historians and critics alike for its brutal depiction of the reality of slavery in Louisiana. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out! Steve McQueen's distinct directorial style and the unforgettable performances of Chiwetel Ejiofor and others helped to bring the cruelty and barbarity of slavery to horrific life. 12 Years a Slave vividly portrays the social and historical realities of a past where men and women were used and abused as chattel, while emphasizing Solomon Northup's astonishing achievements. I will not fall into despair. I will offer up my talents to Master Ford. I will keep myself hardy till freedom is opportune. Number 4. The Pianist This film was closely based on an autobiographical book by the pianist and Holocaust survivor Władysław Spielmann. By order of the governor of the Warsaw District, Dr. Fischer, 
concerning the establishment of the Jewish district in Warsaw. There will be created a Jewish district in which all Jews living in Warsaw or moving to Warsaw will have to reside. However, director Roman Polanski had additional motivation to respect the history on which the pianist draws, as he himself survived the Holocaust in Krakow. This story of one talented man's struggle to survive in the Warsaw ghetto is heartbreaking and poignant, and a testament to the effort to recreate the setting in every detail. From the oppression of the ghetto streets to specific songs Spielmann played, The Pianist is a haunting vision of suffering, made more disturbing by the beauty of the music. Number 3. Schindler's List Steven Spielberg's award-winning movie is considered by many to be the greatest film about horrors of the Holocaust ever made. Tomorrow, you'll begin the process of looking for survivors of your families. In most cases, you won't find them. This tale of German industrialist Oskar Schindler's strategy to save Jewish people from mechanized extermination is a showcase of the highs and lows of the human condition. Holocaust survivor Leopold Poldek Pfefferberg spent years working to have his story of one man's struggle to save those caught in the maw of a destructive hate machine made, and Spielberg's grim and realistic portrayal helps ensure it will never be forgotten. The list is an absolute good. The list is life. All around its margins lies the gulf. Number 2. Downfall the paranoia and surreal madness of Adolf Hitler's last 10 days holed up in his bunker were masterfully recreated in Downfall, a war flick known in Germany as Der Untergang. Es ist unmöglich unter diesen Umständen zu führen. Es ist aus. Der Krieg ist verloren. Based on extensive historical research, the film features fearsomely factual depictions of some of modern history's most vile figures. In fact, many of Hitler's lines were derived from actual quotations taken from his writing. Bruno Ganz gave a terrifying performance as Hitler, both at his most monstrous and his most human. This film shows how, at the end of the day, even the most despicable man in history is still just a man. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Apollo 13 This tale of a brush with fatal disaster in orbit was based on a book written by science writer Jeffrey Kluger and Apollo 13 mission commander Jim Lovell, as well as first-hand testimony of other astronauts. Gentlemen. It's been a privilege flying with you. Made with the technical support of NASA, the historical docudrama was praised for its exact reproduction of Apollo 13 modules and control rooms. Zero gravity scenes were even filmed in the same KC-135 plane, also called the Vomit Comet, used to simulate weightlessness during astronaut training. The tense tale of survival in space against the odds gained universal praise from real astronauts and earned the filmmakers two Oscar wins out of nine nominations. It could be the worst disaster NASA has ever experienced. With all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.